Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. Uh, today is March 26th, and we are going to a regular Dearborn Heights City Council meeting to be called to order at 6.11 p.m. Madam Clerk, can you please take roll call? Yes. Hassan Ahmad? Here. Mo Beydoun? Here. Nancy Breyer? Here. Robert Caston? Here. Denise Malinowski-Maxwell? Here. Hassan Saab? Here. And Tom Wenzel? Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, and next up, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Owen, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Owen. You may be seated. Next up, we have agenda approval. Council, Council Chair. Chair. Councilman Ahmad. I no. I just said I wanted the uh, last. Uh, this is not the uh, minutes yet. This is just, just agenda. A, just agenda no. approval. Okay, for this for today, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, go ahead. We're not. Yeah. Council Chair, I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the agenda for the regular meeting of March 26, 24, with the removal of 2-A City Council resident recognition, and take item 11A resolution regarding Swapka Park baseball field out of order to be considered before Section 4. Approval of minutes. Second. Motion made by Councilman Ahmad, seconded by Councilman Saab. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Next up, we have ordinance and resolution. Uh, first on the air, we're going to have 11A Council Chairman Beydoun's resolution regarding Swapka Park baseball field. Council Chair. Councilman Ahmad, unless you want, I can read it. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want. You can go ahead. I'll second it. Uh, I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the following resolution, whereas Gary Barkov has been cherished and esteemed member of the Dearborn Heights community, having resided here throughout the entire, in his entire life, whereas Gary Barkov has been a dedicated and lifelong activist of the D7 Dads Club, dedicating his time, energy, and passion to the betterment of our community. Whereas Swapka Park, a treasured recreational space within our community, holds great significance for residents and visitors alike. Whereas it is fitting and appropriate to honor the Honorable Gary T. Barkov for his outstanding contributions and unwavering commitment to the Dearborn Heights community. Therefore, be it resolved that the last remaining baseball field at Swapka Park shall be officially named the Gary T. Barkov Baseball field in recognition of his exceptional service and dedication to our community. Be it further resolved that a dedication ceremony shall be organized to commemorate this significant occasion and to express our heartfelt appreciation to Gary Barkov for his invaluable contributions as outlined in 11-A. Support. Motion made by Councilman uh, Ahmad, seconded by myself, Councilman Beydoun. Any discussion? Council uh, Chair. Councilman uh, Wenzel. Thank you. Um, I've known the Barkoff family, Gary and his wife Sharon and their boys, for close to 45 years. And uh, not only has Gary been involved with the, uh, the Dad's Club, he's also a great family man. And he's been he organized several activities for his boys and their friends, the Gus Macker tournaments. Uh, they, they, they love the guy. And uh, I mean, the list of accomplishments can go on and on, and this is well-deserved at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Council you, Chair. Councilman Ahmad. I mean, the resolution says it all. It's a well-deserved recognition. I, would, I do thank you for bringing this forward, and I hope this council body would uh, go ahead and approve this resolution for a well-deserved individual. Thank you, Council Chair. Council Chair. Councilman uh, Constant. Just to echo what Councilman Wenzel and Councilman Ahmad said, Gary's been a... Gary and uh, also Pete Stevens, God bless his soul, uh, the real backbone of the District 7 Dads Club and all the programs that uh, they do for the youth. I coached with D7 Dads Club for years and uh, know Gary as a friend and a neighbor. Thank you. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. Uh, Mr. Barkoff, congratulations. Thank you for your commitment to uh, the city of Durban Heights over the years and decades of service. Best of luck to you. Any other council members? I'd just like to add one more thing. Um, Gary, Gary's done a lot on his own, but I don't think he could have done it without his wife, Sharon. <laughs> um, 
Gary, congratulations. I want you to know when I first met Gary was 2017. And um, the first thing he told me was how involved he was with the D7 club and the dad's club. And I had no idea what it was at the time. And he was like, you, you need to come out here. You need to play baseball. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to join. You got to, you know, become a member. And I said, you know, Gary, you know, one step at a time, you know, well, here we go. Uh, and I believe it. I've been good friends with Gary for, uh, you know, since 2017. We actually served on the uh, commission for the Cultural and Diversity Commission, which we were both appointed by the late Mayor Dan Paletko. Uh And then I shared my contact information with Gary, and I believe his wife would call first and say, Gary wants to speak to you. And I, I started to learn a lot of the traits from Gary, and, and we've kicked it off since, and really, um, he's a great young man, and I know this is something that was very dear to his heart, um, and I, I'm glad that hopefully this gets approved today. I don't see why it wouldn't. It seems like the majority have said great things about you, uh, but I do want to read to you what your brother has sent to me, and he asked that I went ahead and read this to you guys. Um, so, dear Honorable Councilman Mo Dun, I spoke with my brother Gary yesterday, who informed me that he's being recognized for his lifelong community service in our, in our city and park may be designated with his name. Unfortunately, my wife and I will be in Florida visiting family and unavailable for the proposal at the next council meeting. First and foremost, there isn't any more more deserving than my brother Gary T. Barkoff. As my older brother, Gary has always been a wonderful role model for not only myself, but his four sons and children. I wanted him, I wanted his service as the, or I'm sorry, and his service as the president of the D7s Club most of his adult life. He has never complained once about made countless sacrifices to ensure that children in our city were given multiple sports and recreational activities to enjoy. Gary always carried on the legacy of our parents who taught us the loyalty to our community will shape your character. Gary exemplifies every trait of our parents' teachings, and they would be proud to see his name recognized for the his city's long-standing demonstration of our community service. In closing, please extend to the city council members and most of all, my brother Gary, my overwhelming support, sincerely, Jerry Barkoff. Congratulations, Gary. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations, Gary Barkoff.
job looking fresh today. Thank you. Some thousand dollars soon. I liked it. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Cheryl, how about you get up to the front? The podium. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am. Ask her to go to the podium. Ma'am. Let me get out of the picture. <laughs> well, let him stay there, Mo. It's kind of hard. Well, she's He's making the announcement. Surgery. Gary's a loop. He broke his foot on Halloween night, and we just became mobile about a week ago. Shed the boot and going to through physical therapy. He had two surgeries, but he's doing good. He's doing great. But that's our older son, Gary, and our second son, Kevin, and Jason. Jason? <laughs> David had a commitment tonight, and um, we have quite a few. Um, my niece, Jackie, and her husband, Bob. Gary's fiance Tracy, and I can't ha um, have to talk about Marilyn Summers. She was actually Gary's second wife. Oh my God! I didn't even his, <laughs> his second career. I would take my husband to the registrations for all these sports and leave him because I had all those kids to take care of, and Marilyn and him would sit all day at the garage doing registration. So Gary would be nothing without Marilyn. Marilyn, thank you, Marilyn. All those years with Gary too. I mean, she's really done a lot. I, I, you know what? Now I see why I got all those yellings from Gary. It was probably Marilyn the one telling about it. <laughs> and my my niece, which happened to be Jerry Barkoff, who sent that beautiful letter. I mean, I did, was not expecting that. That's his son Jerry and wife Brandy and my daughter-in-law Michael, and another beautiful friend and great partner with Jason Trisha and. We're really overwhelmed. I think Gary's too overwhelmed even to speak. You want to say anything? I just would like to thank uh, the city council for this recognition. Um, I just can't believe it. I know the late Pete Stevens, um, that was the founder of the Dad's Club. Uh, his field is the back one. That's the one he chose. He wanted, because he said, I started with T-ball, and I want to end with T-ball. And he said, uh, Unc Harris is the other field that was the co-founder of the Dad's Club. And Pete always said, there's one field left, Gary, and I hope they name it after you. He said, but I'll tell you this. I told the mayor back then, if they're going to name a field after me, which I hear, you know, it's in the making, they better make it before I... I, I he said croak, <laughs> because I don't want any field named after me after I'm dead. He said, it just, they should name a field after a person while they're alive so they can enjoy it, you know, with their families and everything like that. And I'm really thrilled and can't wait till this summer we have a dedication for that field. Congratulations, Gary. Jesse Morandini, he's another D7 kid. Yeah. And Cheryl, yeah. she grew up in the, I mean, if, if you're from D7, you know. you know everybody. I mean, I used to go to a lady to get my hair done in her basement, and I knew I couldn't talk about anybody, because somebody there might have been from the neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, that's how close this neighborhood is. And my boys actually have a golf outing every year with kids that they went to school with, and it's not dedicated to D7, but they call themselves D7 Finest. They get <laughs> shirts with a, imp a logo imprinted on Who it. Who came up with the name D7 Finest? Who came up with that? <laughs> Why need a new name there after? Yeah. Chris Campbell came up with that name years ago, but they every year they do this D7's Finest. And that's what, God, how many years ago? 20 some years. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so if you're from D7, you're always from D7. Yep. That's the way it is. Well, thank, thank you, guys. You very much. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. And, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely have something also planned out for them um, in the spring or the summer. Thank you. Council thank Chair. You. Councilman uh, Wenzel. Before, not too many people realize that the District 7 Dads Club, it was founded in 1953. And it's the, currently the oldest nonprofit youth sports organization in the country. 
It's, it's, it's something to behold, and it's been going on for 71, 71 years. It's been yeah. Understood. Longer than our city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. It takes fine people like these people here and all the people in Maryland, all the people that have worked in the, on the board of directors and coached and the parents to keep it going for all these years. It just doesn't happen overnight like that. It takes a lot of commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, next up on here, we have the approval of the minutes. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. I actually, before we approve the minutes, uh, in order to go into the discussion. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and read. Um, uh, uh, 4A minutes from the regular meeting of March 12, 2024. Recommended motions that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the minutes from the regular meeting of March 12, 2024 as submitted. Second motion made by Councilman Saab. Second by Councilman Ahmad. Council Chair. Any discussion on the minutes? Yes. I'd like to remove 24-113 from being this approved. The, this is the minutes. Correct. This Correct. From the last time. meeting. We yes. want to move a, a motion that we, we want approved to move a motion time. that we approved. Okay. Hang on. You guys are going to throw me mm -hmm. off right now. Madam Clerk, I've never done this. So I think we're removing something from the last minutes. I think you had, you'd have to amend your vote. Yeah. I think the last time I remember when we did the yeah. Canfield, I had to amend the vote. So you would have to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules. Go back to that motion. I, man. So what, what is it that we're removing? It's, it's, eight, it's the AT&T easement permits because of all their poles laying around. I think we should approve it. That's DTE. No. Uh, there's DTE has yeah. poles, but so does the AT&T. AT&T has their fiber poles laying around the whole city. I've been in contact with them. They came out. I've talked to them. They're just running behind, and they shouldn't use the city as a storage yard. Council Chair, if I may, there are re re repercussions with the Metro Act that has nothing to do with just AT&T per se. There's uh, this motion is directly for AT&T. Uh, your motion, but you said remove this from the minutes, the, a the uh, Metro Act approval. It's not the Metro Act. It's the it's Look the easement permit. 113. It says motion by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman uh, Malinowski Maxwell to approve the extension of the AT&T Metro Act right of way telecommunications permit, permit contract. That's not, you can't link that in with the polls because there's violations and penalties and consequences if you don't approve your Metro Act by a certain period of time. So I would not, I didn't know you were going to do that. I would have uh, briefed it on it for you. Roger, we never we, get briefings from you, to be honest with you. So What, what did you say? We never get briefings from yes, you. Yes, you do, actually. If you read it, it would be good. No. But if, you, if you're looking at the Metro Act and you do that, there's going to be consequences for us taking that off and not approving that. Councilman, I'm just saying, in terms of due diligence, I would okay. not take that act off I, I, now, I, legally. Look, at the end of this, the, the beauty thing about this thing is it's a democracy, Roger. I agree. I'm going to take your opinion on this. I, I didn't know about this. Um, I, I believe they're DTEs. I had a conversation with Barbara. What was her name? Uh, yeah, from DTE. From DTE. I had a long, extensive conversation. I told her not do we just want it out. I said I want our sods re re resolved as well. Because, I mean, the ones on Hass and Charlesworth, there's three of them that have been sitting there for over a year. That's over a why, year. Yeah, that's why. You know, we have... I mean, we're not, we're not going to get into the discussion, but, no, you know, the councilman. No, but DTE and uh, AT&T, uh, DTE comes on. It works with AT&T and the same thing with the poll. So, yes, there is an ordinance. However, this is different. This is, there's consequences I, I, I and penalties if you don't well, approve that act. The motion, Hold right? on, guys. Guys, hang on. Please, nothing from the audience, Mr. Owen. Please, thank you. Look, guys, I'm going to have a discussion. Any comments from any of the council members on this? Council Chair. Councilman Amad. I, I would say just leave it the way it is. Okay. Just approve it and instruct the Corp Council to go out and deal with AT&T and make sure that all these polls are removed. We've been dealing we, with we this for a year. We, 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 we passed an I ordinance. Mean, for him to just follow up with them and right. make sure legally that they have to remove them. And, you know. Mr. Deeb, I know I, we, I was supposed to hear back. I didn't hear anything from the DT uh, representative. But, look, we've already made We've already, we've gone way too far. The ones on has, Mr. Deeb, whatever it takes, Mayor, I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this to you, but please, can you instruct whomever you need to? To get those poles out of our city by, by no later than this by Friday. Well, the way we have it in the ordinance, they tag them ten days. If they don't move them, we tow them. They've been if there they for don't a year come and in, a half. If they don't come in and take them, then we, we'll pay the company. You know, a resident tagged approval. them with a sign almost a month ago. I, I saw the sign. I know. But, but we so have an ordinance that lets us put the sticker on it, and it is due process. Those are twenty five, thirty thousand dollar poles. So once we tow those things and auction them off, and we have a procedure to do that, 
and that'll hit them in the pocket. Can, can I tell you yeah, something? So. But you know, those poles are thirty thousand dollars a pole. Those houses are two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars. A lot more than what the hell those poles are. Let me tell you what that's doing. That's only allowing more blight inside our city, Roger. So I'm going to tell you, we've tagged I'm, them. I'm we've, we've tagged them you. for more than ten. I'm 10 agreeing days. with you. I'm yeah. saying there's a process. Let's follow the process. Council Let's get Chair. it done. We've already started with DTE and AT and T at their top line. They've come in to meet with us on this issue. They don't need to meet with us. Get their poles out of here. <laughs> Council Chair. Go ahead, Councilman. This, this resolution was passed over a year ago. Why wasn't hasn't this process started? I know that's a great actually, question. Well, actually, I mean, the ordinance just got passed a, a, a few months, a weeks ago. It was a year ago, Councilman. Uh, no, no, we passed the ordinance back in February when and when Ray Muscat came into that meeting. Councilman Muscat. Last year, that February. was last year when Councilman Musket, It was Councilman Muscat's resolution. He raised the issue, but it wasn't until the ordinance was just passed. Okay, I know, and that gives us the enforcement authority. Okay. Councilman, let's leave this the way it is for now, please. Uh, we don't want to put ourselves in any way. I'm sure everybody here knows about the polls. The mayor, we have now asked him to please take it into his hands. He's the, you know, the executive. It's been in his in the council hands chair. over a year. Okay, council, council let's just chair. approve the minutes, guys. I don't want to go too yeah. deep on this. It's, it, you know, Roger State said, okay? Yeah, go ahead, okay. Councilman. That we, we haul them off and they go off for auction. Why should we bother hauling them off? We should auction them off and let the people that are buying them pick them up from the There's site. And that's just an added expense that we have. We're restoring. How do we? Pick? We don't have equipment to pick those things up. Yeah, yeah, we do actually. Right. Yeah. Actually, we looked into a, a, a place to store them yeah. a few days, we and we charged. We charged them. We, oh, I'm sorry, Councilor. Go ahead. Yeah, I know, but how can we pick them up? We don't have. We don't have a vehicle that can pick those up and carry them. Actually, there's a company that can do it, and there's a storage yard where it will be placed. Then we can follow the due process and put notice in the publication, just so when we auction it off, they can't come by. You stole our poles. There's a process and procedure for forfeiture, which we are doing, and we're, it's in place. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have any other comments on approval of the minutes? We're going to leave the council, uh, Madam Clerk. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Next up, we have public hearing and comments on agenda items only. Any comments from the public? And agenda items only. Bye, Sharon. Bye, Gary. <laughs> okay. Please state your name, the city you reside in, and the street you live on. But hang on one second. Is he asked for an additional minute? No, no, no. That's for the what's it called? Okay. That's not for agenda items. Okay. So. Okay. Agenda. I, did you guys remove I'm agenda? Out. Okay. Please, sir. Uh, I need you. Your... Thank you. Dearborn. That's all you have to know. Huh? Right? Okay. Uh, there was a bar that got suspended for seven days. You guys were supposed to approve the liquor license today on it. Am I correct? Did you guys table it? Did you, what did you guys well, do? Well, we haven't gotten there today yet, sir. It's on the agenda. Okay, it's on the agenda. I'm asking you guys to table it because of the suspension today. So I need you guys to table that today. There's a seven-day suspension. There's a ticket that they got in 2022, and there's a seven-day suspension on it. What's the name of this place, company? Van Born. Van Born Tavern. Van yeah. Born Tavern. It's okay. We were it's Van Born Tavern. I texted you earlier uh, before, and I, sh uh, I sent you the link for it, that there was a suspension for seven days. And it's the first time they got this ticket. And I don't know how long they've been open. Does anybody know how long they've been open? They've been open years, for quite a few years. Like we'll 20 years, maybe? Five years. Comes up. Yeah, guys. Hey, hey, guys, point of order. Come on. It's the come first. On. It's Five or seven years. Uh, Chair, come on. It's the first uh, ticket that they got. So I'm asking, please, you cannot approve it at this time because of the suspension. I table it until the next time, and then you can approve it if it's, uh, the suspension is gone and uh, they lifted up the suspension. That's Thank all I'm you. asking. Thank you, Mr. Schoen. Right. Any other comments? On agenda items only. Anybody on Zoom? Thank you. Uh, next up, we have fund transfers and current claims. Councilor Chair. Councilman Ahmad. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve current claims and ACH wire transfer 6 1 through 6 67 as submitted. Second. Motion made by Councilman. Uh, Ahmad, second by Councilman Consent. Councilor Chair. Councilor Chair. Councilman Ahmad. I would like to remove uh, number 35. Of the claims. 35. 35. I would like to remove 37 through 43. 37 through for, 43. For Plan Moran, we still don't have any uh, detailed invoicing as we requested last time. Uh, for number seven, um, 
I know I had instructed the previous controller to have a detailed uh, billing for all the Amazon. Yes. yes. So um, it's up to you guys. If you want to no. table this, table it. No, okay. So I I'll, I'll have to move number seven too as well. Which one? Number seven. So we have seven, 35. Have, so, so, okay. I have 7, 35, 38, 39, 40, no, 41, 42, 43. 7, 35, and we have 37 through 43. Well, I'm, I still have to read them out for the... Okay. Yeah. So any other uh, removals? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Um, if our controller doesn't mind, were you able to have a conversation mm -hmm. with Plant Moran? Good evening, Councilman. Good evening. Uh, we actually did meet with them. Uh, they sent over the detail yesterday. Uh, so I just need to go through it, verify that it matches the invoices that are that are on hold, and then I will send those over to you probably tomorrow midday. Thank okay, you. so we're gonna have, so it's gonna be at the next council meeting again. So yes, sir. Can, can you, you do the same thing, please, for the Amazon uh, for number seven? It's the Amazon uh, purchases. Um, I will certainly drill in. I'm, I, I can't make any promises about tomorrow. <laughs> I will certainly no, no. I mean, I mean we're gonna table it anyway, so it won't be approved okay, to well. the next meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Thank now, you very what, much. What is 35 that you're removing? I don't have my list in front of It's Plan Moran. 35, 36. No, no, 30 no 35 is uh, uh, Director Swope uh, schooling okay. in June. It's not schooling. It's actually like a program. This is like the fourth time we, uh, we take it off the agenda. Okay. It's an SMIP program. I, I thought I saw another uh, schooling for another officer, which I want you to know I praise and I, I love our officers. They're just under a different union, under contracts. Okay. Contract. Again, you can't segregate one versus the other. Employee is an employee of the city. So you guys, we're trying to keep you guys out of trouble, you know, by alienating one person versus the other. Mayor, I want, to, I want you to tell you, point of order, we're not no, alienating anybody. No, it's not point anybody. of order, Council Chair. Point of it's, order, Mayor, please. Uh, okay, I, again, all employees are We're not alienating anybody. Please don't. Okay. Please refrain well, from using terms like that to try to better the lawsuit, because okay, that's but, not what's happening. I just well, want to make it clear for the record that person, nobody's being Chair. alienized here. Um, this, this right here, from, I don't even know if you can even use forfeiture funds to be able to use schooling. Uh, I, believe, I believe Gary... Um, Roger was supposed to give an opinion on if you can even use that. Because the schooling... No, no, I please stop. Point of order. The audience, please. Uh, the $10,000 that, that Interim Chief Swope is using is from forfeiture funds. And you were said you were going to give even an opinion on if we can even use forfeiture funds to pay for his what? schooling. I'm so sorry. I didn't, was not aware that I was supposed to do that. Yeah. And if you can follow up and show me where, I, and I'll, I'll follow up. But yeah. forfeiture funds, I've worked with forfeiture when I was a prosecutor. Yeah, I, know. I actually was one of the assistant um, chiefs for the forfeiture unit for the prosecutor's office. So I don't see anything that would stop these funds being used for the educational program to helping the police department um, maximize its, its potential and use of its technology. But uh, I will double check it for you and get it to you by, by tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah, Council Chair. Uh, Councilman Saab. Just a quick question. Regardless, this resolution was, uh, this motion, uh, this item was passed the day of the resolution. I think anything because of that resolution, it's in litigation. It was done. And they, he became in a new position, still put it, and I still believe that let the courts decide on it. Okay. I got that. I don't want to have those discussions. This is about fund transfers and current claims. All right. So are you amending your motion? I'm amending my motion. To eliminate 735, 7, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Correct. Okay. Madam Clerk, do you have that? Councilman Conson, are you going to do you support? Yes. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Amend to amend his motion with eliminating 7, 35, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Seconded by Councilman Conson. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The no. ayes have it. Motion carries. No to the schooling one. Excuse me? Just the one specific one. I don't know. Take, just take off. Uh, you're, you're voting no? You don't want to vote yes on this? I want him to be able to use it. I don't want to say he can't. Okay, then you'd have to vote no on the motion. Yes, the whole motion. Okay. The whole motion. All right. So, okay, okay. Let me do a roll call. Roll call. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Tom Wenzel. Yes. Hassan Ahmad. Yes. Hassan Saab. Yes. Denise Malinowski-Maxwell. Yes. Robert Constant. Yes. Nancy Breyer. No. <coughs> Mo Yes. Motion carries 6-1.
Next up, we have consideration of bids. DPW Director Conrad, bid award grass weed cutting for city owned lots. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council award the bid for the grass cutting of city owned property lots contract to artistic landscaping and lawn services in the amount of $4,285.71. Cents per car for all city owned properties listed in the bid document and yearly cost of $60,000 effective for the 2024 mowing season through December 2028 and authorize the controller to return the bonds <coughs> to the unsuccessful bidders. In addition, authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the contract as outlined in 7A. Second. Motion made by Council Chair. Saab, seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. Council Any discussion? Chair. Yes. Number one is it says four thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy-one cents per cut for all city-owned properties. All city-owned. For all city. Okay. So is this every week, every two weeks? And then so the why? contract I went over it. But why is it for four years? Uh, well, I mean, it's a renewal is of four years. Um, I do have a question. I see that we only chose two, and when it comes to landscaping and you know, trimming and cutting grass. I can tell you something, Mr. Conrad, for myself in the past, we've seen many different uh, people coming in and wanting to be able to cut city owned properties, and be able to bid it. And I feel like we're not getting the best bang for our buck. I also feel like um, artistic landscaping, you know, we had a trustee from D7 come out here and talk about how they were illegally blowing their uh, leaves out and, and grass out into the streets. I mean, this is a company that we don't have the best service with, and I, I do see the margin of different of pricing. I, I, I saw the cut price different when I looked over the contract, but why did we only get two bids? Uh, we went out for advertised bid. Uh, we had and bid not. We had 30 plus downloads of the contract. Um, only two bids were received in the first two weeks. We re extended it another week and received no additional bids. You, you uh, know what the police to, department does? To, to be honest, I mean, it's it's a difficult contract. I mean, it's 62 properties in right of, or right of ways that they mow um, every two weeks. And so, I mean, it's a lot of stops. And, I mean, I, most of the people who called um, and wanted to bid on the contract didn't want to bid on the complete package. They wanted to handpick certain lots and certain areas that are listed in the, in the bid. So, I mean... These were the only two people who submitted a complete bid for all the properties. Um, so, and I mean, you know, I we have not received any complaints about artistic coming into us. I mean, since I've been there, the lady, I, I don't know, you know, if the if the complaints that you're talking about were previous to my tenure, but um, you know, in my time here, I've have not received any complaints, you know, regarding their work. Mr. Conrad, there, there was a resident that came here and spoke, and you spoke with her. And then we asked you questions. We even held their pay until we got an understanding on that. I, you must that, be a little mistaken. That might not have been a mine. That, I mean, they do also do mowing, this you know, for ordinance. <laughs> for ordinance. It was in October. They were working on a resident's house. The lady came here. Uh, okay, so, so that's an ordinance. Uh, so they also have a contract with ordinance to do, mow, you know, people who don't mow their property in a timely manner. You know, ordinance will issue someone to mow their lawn. That's not my contract. I mean, it's a separate contract with artistic to do ordinance violation mowing. This is strictly for my right of ways. This is, you know, along city owned streets, um, areas that we've purchased with the FEMA projects, you know, like along Courier and Hanover. You know those type of properties, so they're they're basically city easements and right of ways that that they mow. Thank you. Any other discussion, Council Chair? Councilman, Amash. if we approve this today, I would like kindly to respect, uh, request, as requested before, I need the time stand photos from before and after every job. See that that's a that's a. I mean, I'll, I'll request that from him. I but mean, I mean, I mean, that's the only way for me to approve it. I mean, I used to work with bank owned properties, hundreds of properties. We used to do the same thing. For way less money. Okay. I we mean, need the time stamp photos before and after for every job they do, that, even for the cleanup. Right. I need, to, I need this to be added to the, to the contract. I mean, I'm not that just gonna, is one of, the, one of the requirements when they mow a property requested by... Director, are you checking their, the, their work? Yes. Every, 
uh, after yes, every we, call? We, we check. I mean, when we get the invoices, we check them. You check them? So yes. I'll make it easy on you. Have them send us timestamp photos before and after so we don't have to go check their work. Yeah, are they, well, it's on their phone. They would take a picture before they start and when they're done. That, that's 62 photos that they have to supply per, Council I mean, chair. That's fine. fine. If that's what you want, if I they mean. Want, they want the job. Yeah. They could okay. do it. Council Not a chair. problem. We'll, we'll Hang take on one care second, guys. So are we, maybe, Roger, we can amend this contract. Can you help us out here, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Any, well, for more detailed <laughs> will, will you amend them? Would you amend the contract? Uh, you want to add that they take pictures like you know, like Amazon or something I, showing up right now. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I mean, we have a good working relationship with them. I don't think gonna that's going to be a problem. Okay. I mean, do you want to, well, after the pictures are taken, do you want to see them? Of course. course. Every time they want to pay them, we want to see what they did. Yeah. Okay, so maybe put it on a database on, on your website, and then you guys can look and check the property. Mr. Cooper, is he going to take it? Council Chair. Go ahead, Councilman Sop. So, Mr. Conrad, you said there's 62 properties, right? Uh, well, 62 stops. Okay. 62 at $45 per car comes out to 27 no, that, that So that's if we add additional properties during the period. <clears throat> so if we add an additional property, that's $45 for the additional property. You know, like... If, if we pick up a FEMA house, which we've done throughout the length of a contract, you know, that's not part of his original contract, but we ask him to mow it, and he does. You know, so that's his compensation. If we purchase any additional FEMA houses in the next five years and need to require him, you know, and, and ask him to mow an additional property. Correct, but that's not my question. You do the math at 62 properties at $45. The properties, aren't a, standard, the properties aren't a standard lot. The properties aren't a standard but 40 by 60 car. lot. It doesn't I mean, say here per square feet. They're, they're right-of-ways, you know. So if the property's smaller, we're going to get a better rate? <laughs> the, the property is a much smaller. I mean, one of the properties he cuts is the incinerator. Okay. He's not going to cut that for $45. I'm just saying, though, if it's across the board, you're doing it based on size. If there's smaller properties, then we're going to get them for a better rate. Because I'm trying to do the math with the amounts you put. It doesn't add up. I, I So one thing I don't have a luxury is the total square acres of cutting. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if we get a FEMA, pro, a FEMA, a FEMA owned property that we're going to call for $45, and the lot's huge, it's $45 then in the contract, right? So why isn't it in the contract based on all properties? Can okay. we maybe get like a square footage of what we're cutting uh, total? The, the, the FEMA properties we get are just your standard, you know, household lots, like we did on the four courier lots we got last year. Or maybe it was two years ago. But, um, I mean, Council Chair, I think we need to add something to this contract, like a policy to see exactly how much they're going to charge us above 45 right. for the size of the lot. We can't just make it open and ended here. Uh, I would say let's table this. Have the corp council work on the contract, add the stuff that we added, and go back to artistic, or if you want to put it back for bidding to see exactly uh, how much we, they're going to charge us over the standard size law. Okay, so can we, I ask a question? What do I do when the grass starts growing in two weeks? Well, aren't they still under contract for one more year? They not, yeah, they no, still have. I mean, their extension's over. I mean, and, and this, this, I mean, this price that, that, on this bid is 7% more than they were charging us last year. 7%. Uh, I'm, I'm not worried about the I mean, price. I'm okay with the price, to be honest with you. I'm so, more concerned uh, what with... what I don't it. understand is you're okay with me extending their existing contract, but not giving them this one. Uh, it's two chairs. more weeks. I don't think that's... Uh, we're going to cut the grass want. anyway. It just snowed the other day, so I don't know how we can, they can cut the grass now. Uh, Corp. Council, do you yeah. mind working on it? But, yeah, if you, Councilman, if, with all due respect, if you could kindly just send me a short summary of what you want me to, to include. Are we measuring it by the square foot? I mean, I the mean, um, just acres? To, I guess he has to go back to them and tell us exactly how much they're going to charge us oh, yeah. over whatever, whatever the standard law is for $45. Okay. How much they're going to charge above that? Okay. I mean, they can so come want, back and hey, say $200. Do you want the square footage for that $45 I mean, I don't increase? Know, you're, I mean, you're, 
you know better than me. I mean, you will come up with something. I mean, I, I need some more details, like, you know, if more I, I will meet, I mean, with, Mr. To, to I will be, meet with him and try to address, I think, your issue, and I'll send you an email. It's 62 sure. properties. What are we paying on for? What, break down the, the, what we're paying for over okay. the year. That's it. it. And then in the contract, it's six, $60,000 a year. Okay. One second, for please. all the properties, for all 62 properties. That could be for 14 cuts a year. That's a little. That's a little under a thousand dollars. No, no, it, it's two thousand seven hundred and ninety. Seven hundred. It's it's four thousand two hundred and eighty-five dollars and seventy-one cents a cut. It's sixty thousand dollars a year. They cut 14 times a year. That's how that number. So this is this oops, comes to chair if you don't mind. This is it doesn't make sense. So you, you come up with a number forty-two eighty-five, and you have sixty-two properties. 45 per each property. So but I don't know how you guys come up with this. It's not 62 properties. It's 62 stops. Some of these properties. I understand, but the contract says the 45 per stop. The, the, the piece of grass between the, 45 the street and the sidewalk on Gully Road if gets by, the, new additional by the Lower properties. Rouge, by the Ecorse Creek. This is the average. By the Middle Rouge. I mean, you uh, know. This is the average. Um, the small piece well, of grass on Ann Arbor Trail across from okay, um, the park. He cuts along the guardrail. The thing's four foot wide. I mean, you know, he's making one pass with his mower. You know, they, I don't think it, I, I don't think we're saying it, we. It's it, come on, man. Point, yes, of point of order. Point of order. Come on. Nothing out of the audience. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I think I, I want, what this council is trying to say is, one, we want to make sure that artistic landscaping is going to be doing its job properly because I'm, I'm going to just stop you real quick, Mr. Conrad. And I know you're not ordinance, and I know there's 62 properties, but I can tell you of those 62 properties, we have a lot of residents that when they're walking their animals or they're out walking out with their family, they're seeing Dearborn Heights look like a very, very uh, uh, ugly, blight city. And 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 I know you're I know you don't want to hear that. It's, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's artistic. It, it's not the properties that we have we don't know that. We have no proof of knowing that. I don't know why he's getting so defensive. I, I, I see the well, invoices. I so we watch their work. I know it's not them. It's not our properties that you're talking about right now. I mean, uh, they, Roger, do good, they do good work. Yes, no. Simply, all we need is we want to see a, a you know before and after photo. Timestamp. Uh, Timestamp. I mean, you don't got timestamp. You're gonna see it on, on every photo that you take on your well, they phone. They can use it again, so I need a timestamp. Okay. Time like date, date stamped, and okay. with with Dunning. We'll add it in as a, as an exhibit um, requirement for the contract. <laughs> also, to our IT director, uh, my phone, my computer is just updating by itself in the middle of this meeting, just so you know. So I'm at 6% complete. Um, <laughs> Mr. Conrad, I, I appreciate your, your passion for this and you wanting to make sure that, you know, we're not in garage crossing our T. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that the city is in the best, putting our best foot forward. Um, and I, I agree with the councilman on some of his concerns. I don't think the pricing is bad at all. I think it's a great price. We just want to make sure that these things are properly being done. Uh, and, and, and you can only imagine. I'm insulted because you're telling me we're not doing our job. Hey, nobody's saying you're not doing your job. Please, point of order, if you want to speak, you're more than welcome to come up to the podium. But there's no need to you know, burst out out of emotions. Uh, this is not an emotional thing. This is simply us saying that we want to make sure you're not art artistic landscaping. You are the director for the city of Dearborn Heights. We are making sure that if we're going to spend the money, that this job is being done properly. We're not saying you're not doing your job. You're doing a great job. Nobody's questioning your job. We're questioning a, a, a company that came in here who had a contract with us that blew uh, leaves and grass and everything into our city, which allows flooding, which went out there. And it may not be your fault. It may be the reason that Ornans hired them. That could be a build issue issue. But it still happened in our city, and a respected trustee of D7 walked in here, showed us videos, gave us her concern, told us what happened when she spoke to him, and the response was, I work for the city of Dearborn Heights. That's not okay, and I didn't, that resonated with me. So, Roger, uh, I mean, I'm going to take this to a vote regardless. If it passes, it passes. If it doesn't, I ask that you please work on that contract to state a timestamp photo of before and after. Yep, I put that in. Uh, pictures, date, timestamp at each job. Right. That's it. And guess what? When they ask to get paid, which properties they cut in those two weeks, we will get a time, time in, in our backup. That's it. Yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, and the same thing goes for whenever we get trees. You start trimming these trees and we're going to pay for them? We want to see them being done. 
We don't know if these companies are coming out building the city of Dearborn Heights and we have no proof of it. You agree, Roger? I will include a due diligence clause, which will include uh, what you just stated, date, time stamp of each job with a picture. And please make sure that if there's, uh, you know, we'll talk later on that contract. Um, so hearing any other discussion on Council this? Council Chair, can we vote yes on it under these conditions be followed? Yeah, we should. And just have them bring it to us. But I mean, it's not in the contract. The, the, we would be approving a contract. You have to agree on it. What do you think, Madam Clerk? How would that work? How would that work? Can we, I know, I mean, we've had a lot of open contracts that are just sitting around. Let's table it. Do you, should we table it, Corp Council, or? You, I mean, they still have to agree whatever we ask for. Why would, you could vote on it and um, just get an additional cost, the current price, but I can get get this to you, and um, at, by, say, by Thursday with the additional to add to the, add to the contract, which will verify that they've done their jobs. Look, I'm going to be forward. honest with you. I don't mind the pricing. I just want to make sure that these, yeah. and again, this has nothing to do with our DPW men and women. They do a great job. I don't know why the, yeah. the director felt, you know, uh, Privilege to say that we're speaking about him and not doing his job. That's not what we were discussing. We are discussing a third entity who does not belong to the city of Dearborn Heights that we have no way of knowing if they're doing their job or not. Council Chair, so you're saying um, possibly approve the motion with the writer that I do a due diligence clause onto the contract, send you to review, and uh, Councilman Ahmed, and then we'll add it to the contract. Don't just send it to me and Councilman Ahmed. Send Every, it to the obviously body. everyone, but you're, you're, you're responding back to me Correct. when you review it. Everyone will see it, of course. Council Chair, question for the director. For are, are they under contract to start mowing this season, like the first mow? It's two weeks. Well, it's two weeks. I mean, my intent was to have this contract in place prior to their first mow this year. Um, I'm sure if I contacted them, they would continue mowing, you know, as they did under their old contract. But my intent was, you know, to have this contract in place, you know, prior to our first mowing this year so that, you know, it was fair to whoever bid on this contract and was awarded this contract that they could compensate it, you know, accordingly. But I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that the working relationship that my staff has with Artistic, that if we ask them to cut, you know, prior Perfect. to this, they would cut. But, I mean, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, if you agree on this contract right now and, you know, Roger makes those adjustments in the contract, I'm pretty sure that they won't have a problem signing the contract. I don't think they're going to refuse to sign the contract, you know, for that change of, you know, photo documentation. And, you know, I guess in Councilman Chair Baidun, my reaction is only that, you know, I feel like you're not trusting me and my staff to check their work, you know, which we're doing. Um, By the way, that was, that was a Councilman Ahmad concern, uh, but um, Really, that, that was my frustration. And I, well, I mean, and I respect it. I know that how much you truly care, but I want you to know something. Uh, one second, Councilwoman. Uh, I do want you to know something. We have a fiduciary due to the city. The last thing that I ever heard about artistic landscaping was that they were trashing our city. So you may have this, and I know you don't want to hear that because you weren't I, here to hear it. I know, we, but we were. Mayor, do you remember that conversation? See, here's the mayor that's agreeing with you. So, I mean, I look, at the end of the day, if the mayor is telling you, I'm telling you, this body's telling you that we've had a bad experience, and then we have this contract in front of us that's not being, I don't mind the 60000 I just want to make sure the job is being done. I know. I just, I just get frustrated when, you know, people do things right a hundred times, and then one time they make a mistake. And that's all anybody ever remembers. Or the and one, it doesn't have to do with artistic. Or, or one time, or one time that they got caught. Anything. I mean... Or they got caught that one time. <laughs> Councilwoman? Um, I guess what we're trying to say, we're not saying we don't trust you, but actually, in essence, we're saving you and your staff the extra work to go out and check on each property exactly. every couple weeks. Makes it easier for everybody. You can do your job. They show they've done theirs. It shouldn't be that hard. Everybody's got a camera. Right, exactly. You know, it, it's just a simple two-second shot and... 
submit it with their bill. That, not a problem. I mean, but thank you. We, we're out in the community, you know, every day of the week. And you guys we look at a lot more than just, you know, going from right. one location to but another. You shouldn't have to go and look at each property. That's right. a lot of properties to look at. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I will still take this to a vote. <coughs> so either way. Um, we take it to a vote as amended uh, to have the changes done by No, Johnson. we're taking it to a vote as, as it is. Uh, motion made by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? No. 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 Madam Clerk, please take roll call. Denise Malinowski Maxwell. Aye. Tom Wenzel? Yes. Hassan Ahmad? No. Hassan Saab? No. Nancy Breyer? Yes. Robert Constant? Yes. And Moby Doe? No. Motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. Roger, just get with us on those uh, on those things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, we have Fire Chief Brogan Bid Award Heavy Rescue Truck. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. I move that the Durban Heights City Council award the bid for the heavy rescue truck from SVI Trucks in the amount of $922,372, which will be 100% covered through the OHSP grant as outlined in 7B. Support. Motion made by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman Ahmad. Any discussion? I will say thank you to uh, Mr. Brogan. Chief Brogan, if you want to get up and just give a quick synopsis. Uh, this is an awesome uh, addition. addition to our great fire department. You can let them know how much this cost of the residents. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Council. Yeah, this was um, one of the last bids that uh, retired Lieutenant Lisa Martin worked on, and it's from the uh, Office of Highway Office of Highway Safety Program, and uh, it's a 100% covered grant. So it's for $930,000, and of that, we'll have a zero match. So pretty, pretty, pretty appreciate it. So, yep, we're just waiting to hear a couple last steps, but yeah, we're really excited to get moving on this thing, and uh, it's going to be a great addition to the department. Thank you so much. Congratulations right. to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Motion made by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman Ahmad. Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have the motion carries. Next up, we have reports from the mayor. Running fit annual Martin Marathon, Saturday, April 13, 2024. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council grant permission to running fit to hold their Martian Marathon on Saturday, April 13, 2024 at 6.15 a.m. As, as outlined in 8A. Second. Motion made by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, next up, we have reports from city officials. Clerk Senia, annual liquor license review. Council Chair. Councilman uh, Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council receive note and file the 2024 liquor license review and direct Corporation Council to contact or in our draft a letter to businesses with a deficiency if the department that cited the deficiency has not already done so, requesting the deficiencies be addressed within 30 days of the letter as outlined in 9A. Second. Motion made by Councilman Constant, uh, seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. Council All in favor, please state aye. Council, Council Chair. Chair. I'm sorry, we're going to take this up for a discussion. Yes. I'm sorry. I would like to remove one item out of... Uh, one business. One business. Out of it, that's the Van Born Tavern. So, did they take care of that ticket, Madam Clerk? No, it's a suspension from the state. Yeah, they took care of it. It was from the Point of order. Come on, please, nothing from the chair. Okay. It was a ticket from the state. Do we know if that's been resolved? No. I think it just was. Yeah, it I think it was just issued. I saw yep. it on social Council, media. Council, Council Chair. Chair. They, they Hang on, guys, one, one thing at a time. Yeah. I'm going to let the Councilman once go first, Councilman Saab, and then uh, Corp Council for right now. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I believe they're currently in their like third or fourth day of a seven-day suspension. So in four days, three or four days from now, the suspension will be lifted. So I don't see why we should remove them. Um, it's just a review. We're approving a review. It's not renewing their license. It's approving the review. Okay. Good, Councilman. Uh, so, so I'm going to refer my comment to 
Corporation Council, and then if he doesn't answer what I got, I'll, I'll talk to Scott about uh, Corporation Council. Talk. You want to refer your, your, your... No, no, go ahead. Go, go first. Okay, go ahead. Well, Andre. if they're under suspension now, whether it's two days, one day, it's a suspension. Um, I think that how you should... Your, your license doesn't expire, I think, till April 30th. Correct. So adjourning it um, uh, another to the next meeting until they clear everything up would make us look good and, and in compliance with the state because it would look bad if we approved it or whatever, and then they... Then the state, you know... Well, you're not really okay. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't want to make a vote on a, a a business or entity while it's under suspension, under under punishment or penalty. I think they had it was it February 12th that they had the the hearing, although 2024, although the incident may have been from 2022, the hearing it was a 45 day um, penalty, maybe for the business not being open, but not affecting the license, just the business being open. The license itself is separate, and if we're renewing that license, what are we doing with it today? If it's not even a renewal, if you're doing any vote on it right now, I would wait till the period, till the next meeting. They have till April 30th anyway. Council, Council Chair. Oh. No, Council Chair, no, 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 I just no, want to say it's Clark. not about renewing the license right now. All we're doing is reviewing what the ordinance says, which is checking our records, our police department, our fire department, our taxes, our water. To make sure they're compliant with the city. So we're as not far as, as far as the ticket goes, I don't know. You can't be comp sorry. You can't be compliant with the city if you're not compliant with the state. And if you're in violation of the state, that is true. That is true. That is true. Council but, Chair, hang on one second. Go ahead, Council uh, Madam Clerk. No, that was it. I was just saying we were going by the ordinance, and at the time of the review, which was not today, it was you know. Madam Clerk, let me ask you a question. If we we're to hold off on we the entire resolution until the entire ordinance until because I don't want a single out. I don't want this company to, you know, especially they're in our community to feel a certain way. If we held out to the next it's council meeting, meeting um, would we still be fine with that? I don't think it's a big deal. I think you could table it. Yeah, I mean, let's just table it. Let's not. Let's not. Okay. You know, let's. You never know what happens. Right. What if in those seven days something they get another ticket, yeah. and then we just approve them? I don't want to put us in that position. So why don't we go ahead and table this, if that's okay with Councilman Constant? Well, I agree with the clerk. I mean, it's, what the state does is what the state does. This is that we receive note and file the review. Yeah, but so, let's just let's just all be on the same page. Councilman Wentz, are you okay with that? Yeah. Yes. I think the clerk, clerk, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. And clerk, Roger, are you okay with that? Yes, Councilman. Chair. Okay. Are you I'm okay? okay with it. All right. So motion to, okay, well, do you uh, uh, rescind your you 9A? Say? And table that? Refer it back to the administration? Uh, we can, I think we can uh, table it. Refer it back to the or administration? Or refer it to the administration to... Uh, to the next meeting. Or refer it back to the clerk's office. We'll table it until the next meeting. Table yes. it to the next meeting. <clears throat> table it to the next meeting. Yes. Motion made by Councilman Constant, seconded by Councilwoman Bright. Yes. All in favor to table it, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. No need to go into the back and forth, guys. Thank you. City Engineer Deeb, right of entry agreement with Army Corps of Engineer for the E Corps Creek. Council Chair. Chair. Councilwoman Breyer. I make the motion that the City, uh, Dearborn Heights City Council, approve the proposed right of entry agreement with Army Corps of Engineer for E Corps Creek and authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to sign the agreement on behalf of the City and further authorize the City Engineer to facilitate the work as outlined in 9B. Second. Motion made by Councilwoman Breyer. Seconded by Councilman Constant. Uh, any discussion? Council Chair. Councilman. Thank you. I think uh, uh, our engineer, Ali Deep, should speak on this because I, if I'm not mistaken, this might have to do with some residence properties, possibly. Nice. Good evening. Councilman, um, so the right of entry agreement is, is um, mainly for the incinerator site. But if you recall, about a couple of years ago, we had some parcels that the city owned um, across that they're near the river, near the Ecorse Creek, and that's the uh, inlet and outlet pipe. So if you look in the attached exhibit, I attached to the, the supplement, it shows where the parcels are. Um, I verified with our um, uh, city. Um, um, 
assessor. We own all the parcels. So the only the only uh, right of entry agreement the army is asking for is uh, for property owned by the city. So the, the the church on the site is not needed. Uh, they need to assess, um, it, uh, provide a survey, do soil boring, and uh, this is preliminary engineering. I just like to add that we have been working very closely with the army ever since we received the design money about a year ago. March of last year, when Rashid Atleib got us the $1.7 million. And uh, I didn't want it to go back another 10 years before we actually used the money. So we have been um, working constantly with the Army, trying to get them to at least start the design. And this is a big step for us. If we get the design of that um, um, ultimate solution, you know, the one we've been talking about since, what, 1994, um, I wanted to get this thing on record, so at least now I have a design for a solution to the flood issue so I can go and proceed and ask for funding to, to build it. Um, this is a huge step for us. I think we have everything we need except for there was a typo, I think, our assessor on, on a number of uh, parcel. So we corrected that one, one of them. Uh, so when we sign that agreement, when you authorize it and we get the signed agreement, we will put the right parcels in place and we should be able to see activities in the field for a change. You know, you will have surveyors, you will have soil boring. Um, there's some concern about the quality of, uh, of the soil. I couldn't find any record um, in the city that indicates, I know it was an incinerator site. I, I just, when, when it was closed, I don't know if there was any closure. Did we ever test the soil? This is what this is going to give us. That's the $1.7 million that Rashid Atleib got us. So we, we should be able to finally start seeing, um, you know, this will be the ultimate solution that will be in turn, um, um, we're also coordinating with Wayne County on the interim solutions, you know, for the cleanup and stuff. So this is, it's, it's important, it's huge. Council Chair, I, I believe this is the project for the re retention, de detention basin at the old incinerator. Yes, sir. To, to alleviate the flooding on the Ecorse Creek. That's the entry point to Dearborn Heights um, for for the um, 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 the water into the, the Ecorse Creek. So as you know, the five miles in Dearborn Heights were actually the lowest points in the creek and the the um, the area that's most prone to flooding. Um, it is not as bad upstream. It's not as bad downstream. We happen to be in that region. Um, so the, um, uh, the lady in the real estate with the Army, um, what we're trying to do is if we are going to do that solution, which I believe to be the ultimate solution, you are going to inter intercept the water. Um, uh, we are going to design it for a 500-year storm. So that is, you know, build the pond large enough and then all the auxiliary, the pump houses and stuff that will draw the water into the pond, retain it. It's a, it's a detention basin, basically. Um, and then release it uh, during dry weather in a controlled manner. So this way... Um, you prevent the water uh, in high, you know, rain event from flooding the upper nights. That's the entry point. Hopefully, if, if all goes well, this, I believe, is the ultimate solution. Mm -hmm. That's the true solution, too. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. any, any more questions from any, any council members? Can we go ahead and take this uh, motion to a vote? Whoever approve it, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Moving on to item 9C, interim controller Turner, Broad Spire payment arrangement. Council Pro 10. Go ahead, sir. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the new payment arrangement between the city and Broad Spire Services. In addition, authorize the mayor and the controller or clerk to sign future warrants for these payments to Broad Spire Services and the treasurer to issue payments accordingly as outlined in 9F. Do I have a second? Second. A motion by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman Winslow. Any discussion? Council, uh, Vice Chair. Council. Councilman, Councilman, please why, go ahead. Why are we doing this? Why are we, third, you know, privatizing or third-partying this out to, uh, uh, and putting money in an escrow account to pay our bills? Interim Comptroller. Can you please answer, Councilman Constant? Yes, sir. Um, Councilman, those, that, that company is our administrator, uh, and they handle all of our workers' comp. It's, a, it's part of a separation of duties, and we, we like to use them because they actually administer the program on our behalf, 
and they are more knowledgeable than the staff within the city to actually manage that workers the workers comp claims yeah and I'm familiar with them there so so these are only for the workers comp claims yes sir okay thank yes you. sir this is workers comp workers comp claims only yes yep. sir Thank you, sir. Also, Councilman Constant, any more questions from anybody? Yes. Councilman yeah. Winslow, please go ahead. How many, how many workers' comp claims are, are active right now? <laughs> we have quite a few. Like, like how many, like 10? Uh, no, it's probably closer to 25 or 30. Of city employees? City or former city employees. Because once you're an employee, that, that benefit exists on your behalf. So if you retire, you still have the ability to file those claims if that claim was active prior to your retirement. Have, have we used these? This company in the past, or if not, have we handled it ourselves in-house? Um, to my knowledge, we've, we've used this company in the past. Long time. Yeah. 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 Any more discussion from anyone? I see none. Can we take this to a vote? Whoever approves, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on to 9D, IT Director Cooper, Purchase and Payment, Smart Deploy Subscription. Council Chair. Go ahead, Council, Council, Councilman I'm, Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the purchase of 150 yearly licenses for the Smart Deploy directly to the manufacturer for a cost of $2,466 using account number 101-258-728-001 as outlined in 9D. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, motion by uh, Councilman Constant, seconded by Councilwoman Malinsky Maxwell. Any discussion? Council Pro Tem. Councilman Winslow, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, what exactly is that? I mean, smart deploy. D Director Cooper is going to go ahead and go over it. Thank you, sir. Uh, so what Smart Deploy, Deploy does for me is it's imaging software, and especially with us getting ready to go to Windows 11, this is software that will re-image a computer with a fresh install of Microsoft Windows, specifically Windows 11. Um, this particular company uh, is unique in the fact that it um, includes all the driver packs, that's all the little pieces of software that makes the computer work with, with microphones, uh, cameras, all the background software. Um, and it's all based on our server, so I can actually deploy it and say, hey, this is the computer. Um, I need to now upgrade to Windows 11. It does the Windows 11 upgrade, or let's say it's a computer that uh, is having trouble. Sometimes it's easier just to erase the computer completely, do a fresh install of Windows uh, to solve the problem so that staff can keep on working. Is that $2,466 total cost for this? It's for the 150 licenses right now. Uh, as I'm preparing to move to Windows 11. Did we get 2,400, not 200,000. Yeah. Yeah. 2,000. Thank you. 150 computers. We're basically yeah. updating 150 did, computers to Windows 11. Did we, get, uh, did we get the three bids on that? This is directly from the manufacturer with their government pricing. No other, so, no other company can even provide a bid for this. Okay. All right. I figured Thank it's you. licensing. It's like asking Microsoft Word to go out and look. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to let you finish this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Any more discussion on this? No more discussion, I see. Uh, whoever approves, please, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank Council you. Chair, it's all Thank yours. You. Thank you, Council Pro Tem. Next up, uh, we have no petition from citizens, ordinance and resolutions, new business. Uh, next up, we have uh, new business license renewal for Carreras. Uh, Carreras. Uh, Cucina. Cucina. Cucina Italian. I'm sorry. I, I'm Italian. Italiana. Italiana. <laughs> Council Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the business license renewal for Carreras Cucina Italiana at 6565 North Telegraph as outlined in 13A. Second. Motion made by Councilman Constant, second by Councilman Ahmad. If, uh, for those who are at home or in the audience, if you have not eaten here, um, it's by the long-standing car wash, Tony's Car Wash. It is amazing. Uh, I cannot tell you how amazing the masa choli is. It really knocked my socks off. I enjoyed it. Uh, my socks are on now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have temporary food truck tent car we license. Oh, we did. We voted. Sorry, we've been telling fasting. 
Motion made by Councilman Constance, seconded by Councilman Ahmad. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. I got excited. I saw the time. I'm thinking we're about to get out of here. About food. <laughs> Next up, we have temporary food truck tent cart license application. Council Chair. Councilman Saab. I move that the Durban Heights City Council approve the temporary food truck tent cart license renewal application for Shawarmaja as outlined in 13B. Motion Second. made by Councilman Saab, seconded by Councilman Council Chair. Johnson. I, uh, I've been in contact with, the, uh, with our building director, if he's on, please. Um, two things with this, uh, this food truck. I'm all for the food truck and everything. They're in violation of how the food truck is parked at the location. The city's asked them multiple times to correct it, and a business owner adjacent to them it blocks its complete view and building from the street. And the plans that they submitted to the city in the backup shows that the truck should be a certain way against the building. They have it the long way. It affects traffic. And then I also asked the building department if they had pool permits for the cement where they made a sitting area, which they didn't get approved for, and they did not also. So I'm going to ask that, um, that we turn this down until they come compliance, just like Mr. Winsall said, that we got we to gotta do our due diligence on all the businesses in the city to make sure everybody's right. Nothing against them, but they have to comply with the plans they have, the way the cart is supposed to be, the food truck. And it just it's not fair for the business owner next door that all he has to look through all day is a food truck. Can't see no traffic, no traffic can see his building. So So I will say um, And if we can get Rick, I'm sorry, Council Chair, if we can get Rick from the building department, yeah. if he can speak on behalf of it, I had a talk with him today. Okay, before I let Rick speak, I just want to say I agree. If somebody poured any type of concrete without the approval or pulling any permits, um, this is something that needs to be stepped down. As far as adjacent to the building, I can tell you that 100% the food truck is on the property of the business owner, which is the mobile gas station. It's not on the attorney's property. So if they're looking out the window, they're saying, well, on somebody else's property, I'm not able to see something. You, you know, we can't enforce by saying somebody can't be there. Now, what do the plans look like? I don't know, but I'd like to hear from the Rick. Council Chair, sorry. Just a quick question. The plans are actually in the backup. Mm -hmm. And if you can see how the, the food truck, it's supposed to go from north to uh, south. And they have their truck east to west. And it's right here. Well, they have it like on a diagonal. It's like this. Yeah, but it's not supposed to. The city did not approve it like that. Okay. The city approved it like this. Rick. And this is their plans here that are approved as, as, as directed by Rick, the city. Rick, what, what are you saying about this uh, food truck? Good evening. The, the trailer is parked on the easement, which is the kind of like the alleyway. And we asked him to move it to the building, and he agreed to it last year, which he never did. And then he poured all that cement and put a little patio back there and kind of. Yeah, he can't do that. Correct. If he, if he goes up against the building like he says he's going to, then it would be okay, but. We asked him to do that last year, and he did not. What's going on with, did he pour any concrete, you're saying, and not pull any permits? Yep, he poured it in the alley. Uh, and if we ever have to dig up our sewer, we will have to destroy all that concrete. This is, that's, I mean, you know what? Nobody's above the law. So, Rick, I thank you for that. Councilman Saab, I thank you for that. Uh, if this council is okay with denying this, we can move this to a motion to vote. Uh, all in favor, please state aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. 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 Madam Clerk, do you even need a roll call on that? Okay. <laughs> motion failed. I think that was the first unanimous motion failed in the history of Dearborn Heights. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have a member of the public's council comments job. from council members. Thank you. Um, yes, council, council, council Chair. Councilman Ahmad. Thank you, Council Chair. Um, this, this coming Sunday would be Easter Sunday. It's a time of renewal and hope. I think it's a time for faith and redemption. I just would like to uh, wish all the residents, whoever observe Easter, may this Easter season fill your heart with joy, renew your spirit, and remind us all that even in the darkest moments, there is a promise of dawn. Thank you, Council Chair. Thank you so much. I love those wise words, Councilman, as you always do. Anyone else? Council Chair. Councilman Saab. A few things. Uh, first off, uh, Again, happy uh, happy Easter to everybody celebrating in our city. Again, I wish you all a great weekend holiday. I want to give a shout out to the rec department for this weekend's marshmallow drop. It seemed like a lot of folks were having fun out there. It was cold. They still managed to get through. 
Uh, I also want to, I don't know if the chief is still here, fire chief. So I want to give a heads up that at the last meeting we spoke that we're in the talks of getting our ladder truck back. We ended up getting possession back of the truck from repair this past week. And they're equipping it back out to be used in full service. So that's a great addition back to the department. Um, and I had for Mr. Deeve, who is still here, I just want to get uh, the progress on the new fire station. As we see, our uh, neighboring city, Westlands, uh, starting construction on their third fire station with the same grant. Our mayor, do we have anywhere where we're at in this process? Or we picked a location? or Because this grant money is timed. We're restricted on it. Council Chair? Uh, yep, Mayor, go ahead. We're still working on it. We're talking to the county about trying to acquire one of the properties. but So we're still working on it. We still have time. You know, Mayor, where the where the property that you guys are looking at? We're looking at two two locations. So let's uh, we're having a meeting with the county in the next few days. So can you I'll, disclose I'll you those two know. locations at all? Well, there's one on Beach Daily and one uh, near Auto Drive. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are you all done here, Councilman uh, Sub? I'm all set. Councilwoman Breyer. I'd like to apologize to our fire department for the lack of total attendance at the recent dinner. Uh, it turns out that myself, Denise, and Tom were not made aware or acknowledged that there was such a dinner happening. So we apologize. We don't dislike our fire department. We, we love them. But uh, we think that it should have been taken care of in a different manner. I personally am really offended. Thank you. Any other council members? Council Chair. Councilman Constant. I'd like to join the other council members wishing everyone, uh, uh, those that observe the regular calendar, uh, uh, happy Easter uh, as we enter on Holy Week. Um, just remember that these are increasingly volatile times and we have a lot to be thankful for. And uh, again, we're all praying, I'm sure, for a uh, prompt resolution to what's going on in Gaza and now in the West Bank and in southern Lebanon. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Chair. Councilman Ahmad. I just want to just say a comment for our Councilwoman Breyer said, just want to remind everybody that that was a private event hosted by Councilman Baidun and uh, attended by, you know, different people that were privately event, you know, invited by Councilman Baidun. So it wasn't like a city event. Otherwise, all council members or probably elected official would be invited to. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman? Councilwoman Manilowski maxwell Yeah, I'd like to piggyback on that. Um, I did get a lot of calls from residents. Um, it was put out there as being a public event. There was a lot of elected officials from the city invited. Um, I had to defend myself from not being there because I had no clue it was even happening, and I apologize. Thank you. Uh, since this is the topic of discussion, and I'm, I'd be glad to do it, uh, if I am wrong, I am wrong. Um, I should have extended the invitation to uh, uh, our councilwomen, both Councilwoman Breyer and Councilwoman Manilowski Maxwell. I tried to contact uh, Councilwoman Manilowski Maxwell several times to extend an apology uh, because I am human. I think I've called you about five times. You didn't leave any messages, so I didn't know. Well, you texted me back saying you would call me. Yeah, I yeah didn't no call back. Yeah, it's okay. I also contacted Councilman Wenzel, and I apologized, and uh, we had a good conversation regarding that. So I, I will say in the past that I've, I've invited most council members, and people just didn't show up. And I want you to know the event started off as a joke. However, not to, not to, yeah, the event started off as a joke between Phil and myself saying, hey, you should fast, and I'll buy you dinner. And I'll invite a couple of my friends. It got a little bigger, got a little bigger. Uh, so it was never an ill intention to not invite the entire council. However, I will take full responsibility uh, because I, I truly admire and respect both of our councilwomen uh, and our councilmen who were not invited. So I, I sincerely apologize. I hope you can accept that apology. You know, this had mayor. nothing to do with the fire no, department. No, no, I get it. it you know, and, and just to say that people thought that we are against Ramadan because we didn't show it made yeah. us look bad as a person. And I apologize. And I, we are one body together united. Yeah. Will you accept my apology? Yeah. Thank I you. Will. Thank you. Will you accept my apology? I'm still thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> I, well, I, didn't expe I, I didn't expect her to accept my apology. Council Chair. Hang on. I, I, I didn't expect the councilwoman to accept my apology, um, but that's okay. 
I am always gonna I'm gonna sincerely apologize. And I had that conversation with Councilman once so he allowed me to give that conversation with them. Secondly, uh, happy Easter to all of our friends and family. It's a time to stay together. Um, you know, if there's any Easter egg hunts going around or if there's taking photos with an Easter bunny, I think the photo that I have with an Easter bunny was I was flipped upside down by my uncle and I was at a donut shop and the Easter bunny was holding me and the Easter bunny was, uh, I was terrified ever since. Um, but, but I really always have a good time. I take my son every year to uh, an event in Dearborn where you can go out and chase uh, or, or, you know, look out for different eggs. So it's always a good time to do that. Uh, and then just lastly, I want you to know that we're coming to 16 days in Ramadan. Um, the councilwoman has always been supportive of Ramadan, so I don't want anybody to ever think that. And then, uh, you know, remember that people are fasting, people are tired. People might have, like myself, might have a clouded mind and might forget to invite some council members, but that wasn't the case. I truly apologize, and there's no excuses for it. Um, and, and lastly, we're ending March as Women Heritage Month. Uh, in 1975, the city of Dearborn Heights had all men on council. I can't wait for the day uh, to see all women on this beautiful council uh, because our women, like my wife, my daughter, are going to, you know, they're the future of this community. And, uh, you know, so to all the great women in our community, God bless you guys. I'm so happy that there's an entire month, the month that I was born and the, in the month of March, that we can, rise, we can recognize our great women in our community. Thank you. Council Chair, I'm sorry. I just wanted one more thing. I just uh, I literally had it wrote, uh, written down and I forgot. I just want to give a shout out to Councilman uh, Tom Winsell for that event he threw. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't know why I thought that it was the uh, last meeting that uh, yep. I talked about it, but the family nights, man, it was a heck of an event he threw, man. It was a, it was a busy event. He was, Tom was running around like his head was cut off. <laughs> um, you know, I want to give you credit to that. Honestly, Thank people you. were just all in the uh, Smiles and having fun, playing basketball, swimming pool, and, uh, I, I, and I truly believe this event is gonna is gonna kick off to sign even bigger in the whole community, in the whole city, citywide. Awesome. I mean, it was a great turnout, and I think uh, I want to thank all the volunteers that helped him. I want him to talk a little more about it, but I want to thank him for actually putting the effort and throwing it and doing everything. So thanks, Tom. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Councilman, uh, once are you next? Yeah. I Go ahead. I am. Anybody else? Um, first of all, I want to recognize for all the Christians out there, this is Holy Week. It's the most holy week of the year um, with the, uh, the crucifixion and death of Jesus and the resurrection a few days after. Um, it's very sacred to all of us, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that people are respecting all of our traditions and our religious uh, things that go on. Um, I'd like to congratulate our Public Service Commission. They had their first meeting and I heard it went pretty good. I'm waiting to hear from the de get the details on that. This is a great, great commission, and I think it's a, the, the people that are serving on it should be thanked for doing, for spending their time for a non-paying commission as of now. And um, the uh, speaking of the uh, the family fun night, um, the nonprofit that I, I I run is Jamie's Kids. We restructured the nonprofit to become we are a community charity now, and uh, the main goal of community charity is to do things for for the community, and uh, uh, the family fun events are are sponsored by Jamie's Kids as a nonprofit 501c3 community charity. And we held our first one, like uh, Councilman Sob said, um, our first family fun night. And our organization is Family Fun, and it's we currently had one at Annapolis last Saturday. We're having two more uh, Crestwood in May come up with the final dates real soon and one at Robichaud and th those are family fun nights and we plan on doing some things throughout the summer a family fun picnic and this is something you know I've always preached about family and family activities so this is just a start of something to do a, a positive thing for our city you know all the negative things are going on and you talk to people that watch our meetings and they're so oh my gosh what are you guys doing what's happening there I wanted to do something that's a positive I've been thinking about it for a long time. I think this is a really good event. We planned on somewhere, hopefully, between 150, 200 people showed up at Annapolis, and we had over 300 people show up. And we had dozens of volunteers. Uh, we had great staff there working out with everyone. Uh, people from Annapolis, the Crestwood Honor Society showed up uh, with 15 students to help us out. They, they dug us out of a hole. We are really worried about, um, about volunteers at that time. But it's something that we look forward to that 
doing for the community, not just these three events, but throughout the year for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have announcements from administration. Councilwoman Breyer. Okay. Uh, well, tomorrow night we are having at 6 o'clock p.m. at the regular location, uh, 3335 South Beach Daily, the Ecorse Creek Commission will be meeting. And then on Thursday, this one has a change of venue due to the schools being closed. It will be at the Justice Center at Beach Daily and Michigan Avenue. And our speaker for South Dearborn Heights Civic Association. And this one will start, well, the doors will open at 6. I think our speaker will probably be talking around 6.30, and that will be our interim police uh, chief, uh, Mr. Swope. So we'd like you all to attend and bring people. He'll be happy to answer any questions and say where we think our police department will be going forward from here. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yep, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to um, thank everybody who helped out with the great marshmallow drop. Uh, we added the snow for an extra twist. It was a little more difficult for the kids to find the marshmallows. So um, I'd like to thank the building and maintenance department, the police and the fire department, my staff, the Crestwood High School volunteers, and most especially Target. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, Council Chair and Mayor. I just want to talk about a couple of upcoming items. First off, Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, from, I don't know why I put the year, uh, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at JFK Library, Plant-Based Food 101. Learn how you can make small changes to your diet that will benefit your health, protect the environment, and improve animal welfare while still enjoying food you love. Presented by Kim Corona and Katie Johnson of Veg Michigan. Also tomorrow... Uh, springtime is the perfect time of year to eat better and get healthy. Come join us on Wednesday, March 27th at the Carolyn Kennedy Library from 7 to 8.30 p.m. for this program on how to be a healthier you. During this program, we'll explore the art of decoding what food labels are really saying. Uh, we'll gain a greater understanding of how everyday food choices impact our everyday health, from avoiding chronic diseases like diabetes and obesity to adopting a eat-to-beat approach to alleviating inflammatory conditions. Let's take advantage of fresh produce and sunnier days to improve our well-being. That's all for now. Thanks for your time, and see you at the library. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. Council Chair, Council Chair. Uh, I, I failed to neglect uh, to uh, yes. thank um, Mike McCaffrey and his library staff for their Oh, showing yeah. up at the family fun night yes. in our Parks and Recreation Department. They were a big presence there with their little putt-putt golf. And, oh, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. We'll, we'll do that again. So yep. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm speaking as your treasurer this evening. Council Chair, you didn't ask me that, did you? You say, are you speaking as a resident? Well, no, I, figured, <laughs> I said announcements from administration, okay, so if you're getting so up right that now. That limited automatically. Yeah. All right, so again, I'm your treasurer, City of Dearborn Heights. We often partner with Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri, and I just wanted to announce that they have a town hall tomorrow evening, March 27th at 6 p.m. It is online, available. If anybody wants more information, they can contact us at 791-3410. But the goal is to get out the news and announce all the programs that the Wayne County offers to help prevent foreclosure on homes. We're not wanting people to lose their homes. We want to get them into a payment plan. I will tell you the City of Dearborn Heights is a partner with Wayne County for the Pay As You Stay program. So we are working with the county uh, treasurer to keep people in their homes. Make sure you contact us again at 313-791-3410. We'll give you all the information so you can join from the comfort of your home. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Treasurer. Uh, Council Chair? Yep. I'm going to make an announcement for, uh, we have our ComStat again tomorrow night at uh, the 20th District Court at Police Station. ComStat is an update on statistics uh, with the Police Department. We are also going to be talking about, we've started um, the uh, legal tracking of all our cases, both uh, arraignment to criminal cases as well as our ordinance cases. Uh, we'll, we've uh, codified it for the first time and we'll be monitoring and presenting what we're doing. We're holding ourselves accountable for what the, uh, the law department does and division does, um, as well as what we do, uh, how we follow up with what the police, the police write and um, the court interaction. Um, I would also, uh, we're April 24th, we're looking to do an immigration day for our citizens. A free lawyers will come in. 
We're hosting it here um, to give presentation on any immigration issues people may have. Um, it's a short time frame, but it's a service to the community, and we want our legal department to really be proactive in reaching out to the community and meeting the needs of the community. I would say from our time when we had our estate planning and landlord-tenant, we had at least four um, city employees who took advantage of um, one of the attorneys to write work on their own uh, estate wills and things like that. So, Thank you. 6 to 8 p.m. at the police station. And Yes. <laughs> uh, hang on, sir. Any other announcements? Council Chair, I actually had a question. I'm sorry, I actually had a question for Roger. For tomorrow's meeting, uh, actually, our resident asked, uh, can they ask questions or not? Did she just ask? Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought they, they actually do both ways. We do the cards and we have afterwards people can ask questions, just like at the ordinance. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You were not during the presentation, but after. All right, Council Thank Chair. You guys. I have just one. I, 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 I forgot all about it. I mean, it's one of the most important things about our family fund night are our sponsors that we had. We couldn't have done it without our sponsors because this is a completely free event. People come and they eat and play games and swim and do all kinds of activities completely free only because of the sponsors we had. And we've had several council members sponsoring us to here to, to, for our events, too. And thank you for all the sponsors. We have a list of them. You can see them on our Facebook page. But thank you to all the sponsors. Awesome. Thank you, Councilman. Um, do we have any other announcements? Clerk, Clerk also. <laughs> Do you have any announcements? Okay. Next up, we're going to go to public comments. Uh, sir, I know you asked for an additional minute, so I'll give him an additional minute. And Can you call me by my name, please? Mr. Hassan Ayun. Thank you. Can you please state your name, the city you reside in, the street you live on? Hmm. Hassan Ayun, Dearborn, National Public Activist. I just want to tell everybody Happy Easter. You know, I celebrate Christian stuff, and uh, I sit here and celebrate Christmas, call my friends, call everybody. I go around town and I see Merry Christmas all over. And then I go around town, I see Happy Easter all around. But shame on Dearborn Heights. I'm a Muslim. It's Ramadan. What have you guys done? Where did you guys put Happy Ramadan? None of you did. I did. You got, hold on, Mr. Chair. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I don't know who's responsible for this. Did you guys put it over here in the city? In the city? Did you put something for the residents to come in? There's 60% Lebanese in this place. And you guys want to sit here and insult us. And you want me to sit here and just say it's okay? What do you think, Ramadan's just for you guys? What about the residents? You did something at the fire department, no problem. Did you put anything around here? Did you put, hold on. Was there a resolution to put any signs up? You guys didn't put no resolution. This, 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 this is terrible. You guys sit there and celebrate everything else. One I, I respect all religions. All religions I respect. But I don't understand why people don't want to respect my religion. I'd like an answer from you guys if you want to. Can you pause this time? First and foremost, um, Happy Easter, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy Ramadan. Um, I, you know, you only guys say it to me. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Individually here, I think everybody here says Merry Christmas, Happy Easter, and Happy Ramadan. It doesn't matter. Can Put I, a sign. Can, Put, well, respect can my I, religion. Can I, I don't care, man. Sir, can you, can I, can I, Mr. Owen, please? Come on. Go ahead. Come on. You asked me to answer you. Go ahead, then. So I'm going to answer you. Okay. We are not the administration. The administration wants to put up a Christmas tree, that's great. They want to put up a St. Patrick's Day, that's great. They want to put up something for Ramadan, that's great. If they don't, that's not on us. That's not this body here. This is a city council meeting. This is, what is it? Parks and Rec usually does all that. Or, or it would be the yeah. mayor of Parks and Recreation. Yeah, They're but guys, both come on. Seriously, there's a lot of Lebanese people here. There's a lot of Lebanese people. Not all Lebanese people are Muslims, just so you know. Lebanon is actually a Christian country. Okay, let me say something to you. There's a lot of people that fast here. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. But observing Ramadan. Why don't you guys have, have some respect? Put something. Do something. 
You put up Christmas tree. I celebrate. I celebrate every time. I get my grandchildren stuff. Easter, I bring them stuff. Ramadan, it looks like you guys have neglected it. It's wrong. It's very wrong. And I don't know what you guys are going to do. Is the city failing? Yes. You're not recognizing us. And it's a shame. You should recognize us. I'm a U.S. citizen. Okay? I was born in this country. My father and mother came in 1972. I'm going to sit here and just look at myself and say, we've been neglected for years. Nobody looks at us. And I don't understand why Dearborn Heights still has not done anything. I'm asking you guys, please, to respect the holy month. That's, that's all I ask. To put a sign, put something, do an event for children, or, or, or we, we don't exist, am I correct? That's wrong. You guys are doing something for Easter. I respect Easter. I do stuff for my grandchildren. But you guys have never respected Ramadan. Shame on the administration and shame on the council. That's all I have to say. Council Chair. Hang on one second. Yeah, go ahead, Council. You know, to Mr. Roon's uh, comments, uh, I honestly I agree. You know, we do. Uh, the, the, the administration and Rex always put on every holiday. It's decorated outside. There's flags. There's everything outside. It is kind of a shame that with with. A lot of Muslims, we have a huge Muslim uh, population in the city that we don't recognize them on the Holy Earth Month. And that honestly falls down to the administration and the rucks and parks. I mean, do we have anything planned out for Ramadan? Why not? No. What an insult. It's no, no, what well, an honestly, insult. Honestly, hold on, hey. Mr. Oum, please, hold on one second. It's never been something that we have done before. But why haven't we considered it? No wonder we have so many Muslims in our community. And Mayor, why haven't we decorated or put anything in front of City Hall? Well, you know, instead of pointing fingers, I know I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the say, questions. I'm not pointing take, fingers. Take, take the blame on yourself. I, take the responsibility. We all take the responsibility I'm, 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 for I, messing I, up and not I, doing. I said, I'm, I, I said it's a shame, and I took responsibility. I'm just asking why we do it for every other holiday, but except the Muslim holiday. It's a valid question. Okay, no answer. I'm sorry, Mr. Woon. They don't have an answer. But here's here's the problem. Last year, the Artist governor time. recognized Ramadan as a holiday. The people in this place supposed to get a day off paid because of Ramadan. Did you know this, Mr. Yeah. Chair? No, I did not. Well, look it up. It's on the list. Yeah, Councilwoman, you had something to say? Is there a possibility we could, at this point, put something on Facebook to at least acknowledge Ramadan? And the citizens who are? I, I think they did on Facebook. It's just saying in, 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 in ethics of putting it at, on city property, at city hall, or doing an event in Hang the city. Hang on. One second, please. Councilwoman? No, I think moving forward, we do need to make changes. We dropped the ball on this one. I agree. And I agree. And I agree. I'm embarrassed. And we should put more effort in the future. We do have our cultural committee to help us work on it with ideas, because we do June th Juneteenth. You know, yeah. so it's something we need to really address. So, I mean, you know, there, there are Ramadan trees maybe for next year, Mayor. You can have one at City Hall, decorate it. That, those are great concerns, I mean, and uh, you can have it up for there. I mean, I know that Dearborn does the Kaid festival every year. Uh, maybe that's something that we can consider. Council Chair, we've put together the paperwork for our first civic association for the city it will allow our commissions now to raise money for different events, to purchase things for the holidays, our cultural commission, um, our women, uh, the different organizations we have, which will be able to focus, I think, on making these events happen. Thank you. Any other uh, comments from the public? Thank you, sir. Please step up. Please state your name, the city you reside in, and the street you live on. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mayor, Council, Administration, uh, Assistants. I'm actually a neighbor of Dearborn Heights down in Inkster, um, 170 Trimley. I was coming by, and I wish I could spend some more time. I actually had to get out of here, so I plan to come back in a couple weeks uh, for me. Hey, Lynn. Um, I, I'm with uh, Midwest Recycling. We uh, recycle shoes and clothing. Um, just wanted to figure out if we could partner with um, the city of Dearborn Heights. Typically with cities, uh, we place bins and pods throughout the cities. Um, collect different shoes and clothing, and we also uh, give contributions back to the city based on what's collected. Um, and so this is one way to avoid some uh, waste costs and also a way to just help citizens out in terms of getting rid of some of the clothing that they no longer need. 
Um, so if I can, I'm going to give this to the secretary to pass to everyone. Also, my business cards here. Um, and looking forward to seeing you all thank in a you. couple weeks. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joel Jones, our former state representative as well. Yes. Thank you for all that yeah. you've done. It's good to be back. For your service. Thank you. <laughs> Council Chair, I mean, this is a great idea. In our family, we don't throw out any clothes. I mean, we take them someplace. We take them to the, the step one, I think it is, over here. Or maybe, I'll, maybe I'll set up like a study yeah. session and Perfect. we can yeah. uh, just look into this eventually. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get in contact with thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Otherwise, this stuff goes in the landfills. You know, and it can be used, re re reused, right. for sure. Thank you so Thank much. You. Y'all have a blessed evening. You too. Thank you too. Any other comments? You asked for an additional minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go on, sir. Oh. My name's uh, Ron Frenzy, live on Fairwood, Dimbron Heights. And in November 7th, they had a general election for the city council members, and the uh, League of Women Voters put out this form, and they asked five, five of the council people. Councilwoman, please. They, had, uh, they were asking uh, five of the people what they thought or what they would like to do for the city. And two comments were really interesting, so I just want to go over those. One comment was, uh, we have an issue of aging sycamore trees that have reached their life expectancy. They are dying. The bark and leaves are falling off all summer, summer long. Dead branches are falling and damaging cars. The DPW should uh, cut the trees down. So two comments about this. One is that the dead branches are falling on cars. My neighbor had a branch that fell from a sycamore tree onto their front windshield and punctured the windshield. A man, and this, this neighbor's got two of the best little kids you'd ever want to see. They got a second grader and a third grader. They play all the time in front of their house. Imagine if that branch fell on their head, their neck, or their body. It would pierce them. I mean, a windshield is pretty strong. So this, this, this had a hole in the windshield. And so my neighbor went to, the, uh, went to a repair place, and they charged them $205 to repair the uh, windshield. Could the city council pay for that? Because it was your tree. This is, why don't you do me a favor? Is this for your neighbor? Neighbor. Well, why don't you give George your neighbor's phone number, get in contact with a corp council. I don't think we have the authority to tell somebody because of, you know, a damaged tree that you know, we don't even know if it was raining that day. We don't know. We don't know anything. It doesn't doesn't matter. It's just that well, what, what it was a tree. No, it was no, your tree no, between sure. the sidewalk and curb that damaged his uh, that damaged his uh, windshield. Council and chair, you had to lay out two hundred and five dollars for that. You can get your contact information, and I'll have you reach out to Corp Council or reach out to the resident. Pause this time real quick, um, and we'll go from there. Council Chair, what I was going to say was he. The, 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 the uh, person that had a car can file a claim with the city. We'll pass it to our MMRMA insurance carrier. They will evaluate it. I don't know what happened in circumstances like council chair said. So the, uh, our insurance carrier will evaluate the claim. For I can tell you that I know of a resident that a tree broke, a branch fell, it hit their mirror on their side. The mirror broke, and they were compensated on that for their, and it was repaired and everything on, on the MMRMA's uh, insurance part. So I would just see our corporate counsel for this information. Yeah. The, oh, well, that's good. Yeah. And but now if it was raining, you know, and, and the, you know, that, that goes back to the adjuster and the insurance company, because if it was raining and the trees were going back and forth, then it wasn't at the fault of the city. Yeah, but it was a city tree. I mean, so if rain falls in the city, it becomes the, city, the city's rain? Well, it's the flood. You know, just like you've had all this e -Course Creek talk about the flood. Yes. Uh, we don't know the circumstances. Just have us file the claim. We'll oh, pass yeah. it to MMRA. They will evaluate it and then get a, cover, a letter accepting or denying it out to the resident. And then the second part of this, and I'll, and I'll be done, the council person said that the DPW should uh, uh, cut down these trees. Is that possible? How's that? Um, that would be an administration question, but I'll tell you something. It sounds like something I wrote. Um, no, it was another... Council person. Okay. I, I will tell you, sycamore trees have been a huge issue in the city of Dearborn Heights. I think you, you have shed a lot of light on there as well, sir. Um, but for 
DPW to take down 1,500, 2,000 trees. I, I, I'm, only way, way two. I'm only advocating for two. I'm only advocating two. Where I live, there's 15 to 18 of these trees. All we want is two. You know, but you only want two. The next neighbor wants two. The next person wants eight. The next the city couldn't endure that that burden. I'm just be, I'm just speaking as a fiduciary duty to the city. Um, it'd be very hard for us to come out and say that the taxpayers are going to pay to chop down the trees. I know that we planted it, but you got to maintain it. Or no, they don't even maintain it, do they? Yeah, they can't. That would be DPW's decision. So if you want to also get in contact with Roger, Roger, uh, call him on both discussions. This is an administration. I don't know if the mayor wants to talk about this. Mayor, you want to talk about this? I'm sorry, your mic's off. But, Mayor, do you want to say anything oh, to the resident? Again, let us know the address. We'll go look at the trees. There you go. And that's that's the well, proper way, the, proper process. Been, that's per the ordinance. Yeah, the DPW has been to, to the house probably four or five times over the past four years. And it's still, the tree is still there. Council Chair. Hang on one second. Okay. Is there anything to that? You need to go look at it. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not there. Can't see the trees. Well, no, yeah. Yeah. The mayor will go out and look at it. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll take the council chair with me. There. <laughs> and you know the funny thing is, I'll really enjoy going there with the mayor. I have a, I have a lot to say, but you know what? Mayor, when do you want to go? Because I'm, I'm all for it. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow. Noon. Tomorrow at noon, we're going to be at your house. Give me your address. I swear I'm going to meet at your house tomorrow at noon. Okay. I'm all for it. Okay. You can't call me on my bluff. I'll be there. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hang on one second. Hey, Siri, <laughs> set me up an appointment tomorrow at noon with Mayor Bill Bezzi. Council Chair. Council Chair. I'm glad we have some good laughs. Listen, me and Mayor have a great relationship when it comes to taking shots back and forth. Um, Council Chair. Councilman Wenzel. Uh, the city of Dearborn Heights has an app that they can go to. I'm yes. not really sure. Uh, is, are you familiar with the app, Roger? It's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website. And you can, you can actually go on there and make a claim or, or concern about a situation. Yes. And it's, 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 it's logged in. It's documented. And I, I, I did it one time. Uh, I used one of my daughter's phones to do it. I put it on her app because I couldn't download any apps on my phone. I forgot my password. And uh, <laughs> so, and it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was the problem I saw. There was a resident that called me, and then I, I made a report for them. And I, I, you, are you familiar with the name of the app? Is anyone? It's, it's on the website. Just go on the website. Yeah. It pops up. Yeah, and it's, you can, it's, 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 really, it's really easy to use, too. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Wow. Could it be before 8 o'clock? Yes. I got a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Councilman Saab. Seconded by Councilman Saab. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Hallelujah, guys. Vince, we finally did it. Vince was raising his hand. Sorry, Vince.